Hello everyone. In this section, we are going to discuss about how the GPU memory hierarchy is modeled in MGPU SIM. The first thing we're going to talk about is the L1 cache. Now there are three different types of L1 cache. The first is the L1 vector cache, which is private to each compute unit. And then there's the L1 scalar cache and the L1 instruction cache, which is shared by four compute units, which is referred to as a shader array. The L1 cache diagram is shown on the right-hand side figure. The first thing to note is the top port. The top port is responsible for receiving requests from the compute unit. Once it receives this request, it is sent to the coalesce stage. So the coalesce stage would merge requests that are going to the same cache line. Once the coalesce stage is complete, we go to the directory stage where the actual read happens by reading at the bank. In case of a L1 cache hit, this uh, data is re returned to the compute unit to the top port. However, in case of a L1 cache miss, what happens is that the request is forwarded to the bottom port. The bottom port would then forward this request to the L2 cache. If the L2 cache has a hit or a miss, depending on how it handles this request, it is going to eventually return the data to this L1 cache, which is going to go through the parse bottom stage. Once it goes through the parse bottom stage, the bank the data is going to be updated in the L1 cache and then responded accordingly to the compute unit. So another important thing to note with regards to the L1 cache is that it supports uh, hits under misses and as a result has missed status holding registers to support this. The missed status holding registers also serve as a natural coalescer for servicing multiple uh, uh, requests that are going to the same cache line. Another important thing to note is that as per the GCN3 specifications, the L1 cache has to ensure the return order of request. For example, if a request arrives at time t and another request arrives at time t plus one, the L1 cache has to guarantee that the request at time t is returned before the request at time t plus one is returned. It also supports a pipeline design. As we can see, multiple stages are there in this cache, which can handle multiple uh, requests from the uh, different multiple requests in the different stages. Now, coming to the L2 cache, the L2 cache is actually a memory side cache, which means that it's, uh, first of all, one important thing to note is that the L2 cache is multi-bank, as you can see in the figure here. So each unit is handles a part of the address space and a cache line would reside in one of these L2 caches. The reason for multi-banking the L2 cache is because it enables it to serve multiple requests from the different L1 caches. Uh, this is very important for GPUs because there can be multiple requests in flight from the L1 caches as since GPUs have very high memory bandwidth demands. So multi-banking is critical for performance. The L2 cache is also a write back cache. Uh, one important thing to take care of is uh, which we do in our simulator is that in case of memory copy, for example, from the GPU back to the CPU or from one GPU to another, the data has to be flushed. This is because the L2 cache can contain dirty data, which is not updated in DRAM. Similar to the L1 caches, the L2 cache also has missed status holding registers to support hits under misses. And it can basically, so this means MSHRs are basically coercing requests from the different L1 caches. The L1 to L2 interconnect is through a crossbar, which is what is most commonly used in GPU designs and is therefore the one uh, design that we model in our simulator. In the next section, we are going to take a look at what are different multi-GPU communication mechanisms that are modeled as a part of MGPU SIM.